today. Today we're going to be talking about like one simple thing. And uh, there's a simple thing that's called uh, Kubernetes ingress. How many of you are actually using Kubernetes today? Okay, so not <laughs> even less people using Kubernetes in, in, in Denmark. Um, and how many of, you, of those people who just uh, raised their hands use Kubernetes in production? Okay, so it's, for, it's good stuff. Okay, um, do you have any services that you expose to outside? And what are you using for your ingress? Okay, everyone is using HA proxy? Nginx, anyone? Traffic, okay, okay. Uh, how many of you heard about Kong at all? Okay, few people heard about Kong. Okay, good stuff. At least uh, uh, we have some, some understanding. And today you will learn more about Kong and uh, hopefully uh, you get the chance to try it. So uh, we're gonna be focusing on this thing. Uh, it's called Ingress and how we can expose different services that are running inside my Kubernetes cluster. That's my, you know, <laughs> the Kubernetes cluster and that's my service that will be running and we will be exposing this to, um, to this particular URL. So all this stuff is live, uh, clusters live deployed, so you can even like try to access this from your phone and for, or for your, um, from your laptop. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking not only about uh, traditional HTTP-based workloads, I will talk a little bit about how you can expose gRPC services, how you can expose TCP services in case if you need this, or even uh, how you can expose UDP uh, type of services. Um, my name is Viktor Gamov. I work as a developer advocate at uh, Kong, and uh, Kong is a cloud connectivity company. We do a lot of stuff uh, to support developers who build apps, cloud, on-prem, VMs, and we are building tools that provide you in, um, reliable, secured, and observable connections for your applications. Uh, that includes uh, things around API management, full API management lifecycle, includes stuff around the service meshes, and some stuff around uh, tools for developers. So today I'm going to be focusing on, uh, mostly on API management side of things. So brief agenda, what I'm going to be I'm trying to use less slides and I'm gonna do lots of demos um, and I really want to have some interaction. So it would be great to have some questions from, from the room. Um, that, would be, uh, that would be great. So use this opportunity because not so many people here. So you have basically a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Um, I know a few things. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna set the stage and uh, why we need uh, ingress in, in, uh, in the world of uh, Kubernetes and why it was invented there how we can um, use Ingress, how we can expose simple REST services, and uh, how we can expose something like more uh, exotic, or well, apparently not so exotic because so many talks about gRPC at this conference. Apparently people are either uh, trying to use, trying to learn, or uh, not convinced yet. So we'll look at the gRPC, and we will talk about some advanced features, how we can supercharge this ingress without changing the code of the application or even looking inside the, the code. So only code that I will be showing you today would be probably YAML, if you consider YAML as a code. Um, rest of the stuff is 100% unrelated. And the point here is that I'm trying to not to look into like uh, the way how the application is implemented because it's pretty much irrelevant for the um, are we developers here or are we operations or like how many of you developers here? Okay, so, okay, developers. Um, and uh, because sometimes operations people, they don't really care what they give them. You just like ship them with their like some RPM package or dev package or Docker, uh, Docker image or something like that and they will make sure they will run this. So since we developers, um, again, only code you will see YAML. So, um, how are we going to be running these apps in the Kubernetes world? So when we run uh, apps in the Kubernetes world, we usually have a cluster um, that will be consist of multiple uh, like physical nodes. And this uh, thing will represent one something that we use as a pool of resources. And uh, those nodes would be uh, utilized based on the different uh, the scheduling logic that the Kubernetes provides. So when you're de deploying, say, um, a service that will be serving some of the orders and you set the replication factor for this service, our application factor of three. So Kubernetes will take those pods and distribute them across the nodes and um, 
uh, those nodes will be, you know, utilized uh, in order to provide you with uh, reliability, uh, fault tolerance, and all this upper jazz. Now, uh, in order to order to order uh, to provide external access to the service, um, there's a couple ways. Um, inside, the, when you deploy your application, uh, and if you want to make this application routable inside your Kubernetes cluster, you need to assign the some the thing called service. It's a resource. Um, that has a like a definition in, in Kubernetes world, and this resource is actually um, uh, creates like a uh, internal uh, addressable uh, name for this particular service. In in, in the case of uh, the orders, it will be something like orders dot svc dot uh, uh, namespace uh, cluster dot local. Uh, that's gonna be the way how you can be able to access this inside Kubernetes. To expose this to outside, you can actually change the service to something by default it's cluster IP, meaning that it will be available inside the cluster. If you change this uh, uh, of the service uh, type to load balancer, you will have with the great uh, uh, prob probability, you will get the external IP address that will be addressable outside of Kubernetes cluster. And Kubernetes will be uh, responsible to route all requests that hitting this particular IP address to um, underlying services. So once you start building these uh, apps in Kubernetes, still bringing more apps, you also need to expose those apps somehow. And uh, to build a load balancer for each for each of your app uh, would be really wasteful uh, from perspective of like you might not have a pool of available IP addresses and uh, usually the cloud providers if you're running this and like manage the service uh, will charge you differently for load balancers and, and things like that. So uh, Kubernetes community come up with this idea, okay, so instead of having this um, load balancer per service, we'll have something that will have some sort of like a centralized entry point. And this proxy will be a thing that we know as Ingress. And Ingress was designed to be um, this, this resource that will be as, or bound to one uh, load balancer and we'll be routing the um, traffic based on the routes um, to the different uh, different services. Um, so that's where we're going into Kubernetes Ingress. This is the again this picture where we're going into this one. So now um, you still can have this service that will be addressable inside your application because sometimes your application needs to communicate to each other. We're not going to talk much about the inter cluster communication today. Um, and uh, we're going to be using Ingress to access this, this type of stuff. So from perspective of YAML, this is how it looks like. It's the vendor neutral specification. There's nothing to do with like any particular provider, like HA proxy, Nginx, traffic, nothing. So you have this Ingress, and uh, that should work pretty much with any, um, in any providers that uh, support this kind of like ingress. So Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes model around a, uh, dealing with um, some sort of resources is uh, very much reminds like object-oriented style, right? So you have a, they defined a interfaces that uh, underlying providers, like different vendors of the software, um, will be implementing. So this is basically an interface, and this interface needs to be, um, will be available as an actual implementation based on actual provider that you use as an ingress controller. So in this case, we specify a couple of things here. So for a particular, uh, we can specify the, the routing logic. We can do this based on the path, or we can use this based on the host. Um, and if we go to example.com slash bills, we will hit this underlying build service. That's like simple. That's the simple logic about ingress, and there's nothing uh, really uh, difficult here. However, um, let's uh, focus on uh, what actually happens when we're applying this, when I do like kub control, apply, ingress, YAML, so what is actually happening here. So when uh, the, the kub control will turn this into API call, that internally will try to find so-called ingress uh, class. Um, usually in uh, your ingress specification, you need to specify um, kind of like a hint uh, for this ingress, which 
uh, ingress controller will handle this particular uh, object. Um, in the past, uh, we used annotations inside the Kubernetes ingress annotation section. We can specify a particular uh, the, the implementation that will be handled this ingress, um, but it, it's now deprecated and you need to use explicit like ingress class to specify. I will show you in, uh, in a few seconds. So why am I talking about this? Like how many of you watch Star Trek or familiar with Star Trek at least a little bit? I don't know how it's, uh, how it's uh, popular in, uh, in Europe, but like uh, one of my favorite show. Yep, <laughs> live long and prosper. So Jean-Luc Picard, um, so he will be representing our application today, like the vanilla application that, uh, you know, uh, does, does the job, like uh, get things done, make it so, again um and that's what it, what this is what he what he do and um it's like it's like your application your application needs to focus on the certain things like microservice needs to be micro because it needs to serve a particular thing it needs to be implementing some business logic however we need to face with um or deal with the so-called like cross-cutting concerns, things around how we can handle load balancer, circuit breaking, uh, notification, handling metrics, uh, the gathering uh, uh, some of the log information, caching re requests, and do maybe some transformation if you need to migrate to the different uh, API versions and so far and so on. So this stuff uh, needs to be implemented somewhere. Um, either you implement this as a part of your application, so in this case, you, uh, apart from the business logic, you're getting back to putting all this stuff inside your application. Now you don't have a microservice anymore. It's already like a big service. We, so uh, how many of you have seen the Invincible cartoon? Okay, one person. You probably got the, get, get the idea, but uh, um, hopefully it's self-explanatory uh, meme, but yeah, who will implement this? So, and as a developer, you don't want to implement this because every time when you build a new application, you either need to implement this as some sort of library that you need to share. If you need to share this library, you need to support this. If you need to support this, you need to provide different, uh, like a support uh, agreement with your internal customers or external customers. So it's the, sometimes um, will be, Sometimes this will be kind of like unnecessary. So this application, your application, wants to receive all these like augmentations for free. So Jean-Luc Picard received all these nice uh, like things so he can see better and uh, do the other things. So like like your application with the um, all these augmentations can be attached to your application without you implementing. And this is where um, this you know proxy thing comes into play. So um, here I'm. Uh, replacing this proxy with the thing called API Gateway. And essentially, API Gateway, it is a uh, proxy. It's a kind of reverse proxy that allows you to uh, provide an extra hub between your application and um, apart from just being like a simple traffic, uh, like a proxy thing, we actually can do some useful stuff here. Um, and this useful stuff will be around things that I just already mentioned. Things uh, with um, with different uh, metrics, with the notification and the rate limiting, so all these kind of things. I'll show you how you can uh, do in a Kubernetes native way. So the way how it's done in Kubernetes native way, uh, Kubernetes is an API server, and uh, Kubernetes is the system that you um, submitting a, your request saying, hey, this is the state of the world I want to have. I want to have um, the three replicas of my applications. I want to have uh, disk storage with 100 megabytes. You don't tell Kubernetes how to do this, so Kubernetes will you know, make it so, like in the, in the Star Trek. Um, so you just need to define. So the same way we're configuring this uh, underlying proxy, so we, we have our custom resources that allows me to um, to build um, some some uh, like some custom objects. So those objects will be essentially represent the configurations for for plugins um, that will enable or disable certain features. So th this is the example of um, a custom resource that called uh, Kong plugin um, that will be uh, enabling a plugin named a key off. So this key off will um, uh, create 
uh, authorization logic in our application. Uh, so they will, or our API will be accessible only um, if this key will be provided. Uh, with this name, uh, or like API of, and the, the, how we, this is how we can uh, apply this into um, into ingress. So in this case, uh, I'm putting this inside the annotation. So it's still kind of still a little bit of um, um, uh, vendor specific, but not so much because annotations only will be interpreted by uh, underlying ingress controller if. Under, uh, underlying ingress controller interested in this type of thing. So if you would submit this ingress to something like other than Kong, it will just ignore those uh, plugins and your ingress still works. So that's the kind of like a beauty of extending this uh, through this uh, type of um, t this type of approach. And it's still uh, still uh, standard ingress. Yes. Uh, wait for a second. We will talk about <laughs> this stuff. Yeah, we will. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how we can solve solve this. Um, we can also chain the plugins, so we can have multiple uh, things here. So, like, you can apply only this plugin uh, for if the key is available. And there's. Uh, I will show you how we can you know combine this and how those work together. Um, so, but like the idea is that you can have more than one plugin. Now, and uh, this is this is basically what we're going to be doing rest of the presentation. I will be showing you how I can do uh, this step of step for uh, for Kong. Um, and uh, I didn't say that. Uh, and uh, if I will not mention uh, like explicitly along the way, all the things that I'm telling you here are available in uh, open source uh, version of Kong Ingress Controller and Kong itself. Uh, Kong by itself, it's the API um, API gateway that uh, has like 32,000 stars on GitHub. So it's quite popular. Um, <laughs> someone, someone is using it. I don't know if why um, you folks not using it here, or at least like there's no uh, one single person who, who used this. But hey, uh, hopefully after today. Um, and all these demos that I will be showing today, it's everything is available as open source. Even though we do have uh, some uh, like uh, commercial enterprise plugins, all this jazz that I will be showing today is totally free and totally open source. All right, so um, and this is where my slides will end, and we will go into um, something uh, very interesting. Hopefully, at least it was interesting for me when I was building this stuff. All right, so um, what we're going to be building today? Uh, I already built a um, say I work in a company and we want to expose certain APIs, and I, uh, my company is um, uh, building APIs for um, quotes from popular pop cultural uh, reference movies or memes and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm selling uh, or like I'm providing APIs for quotes. So we will start with quote service that will be generated the uh, quotes for Back to Future and uh, some of the random facts about Chuck Norris. And uh, uh, the way how this would look like, I will call the service, it will give me a quote. Um, Let's t t take a look uh, on the first one. The first one is going to be our uh, Back to Future. Um, and I will go with uh, Back to Future. And while it will be uh, deploying, I will show you what we have here. So this is the, the, st the standard Kubernetes deployment. There is nothing special. There is a uh, only image that I, I, I built. And this image uh, will provide me with the service. Only thing that I need to configure here is that what kind of service I want to use. So I'm deploying back to future service. And um, uh, for example, if I will be deploying Chuck Norris service, I just need to, where is it, Chuck Norris? Um, if I will be deploying Chuck Norris, I just need to specify that this is the Chuck Norris service. So if I will just do, um, if I will just do Chuck, it will also uh, create the service and deploy the service. So let's explore what we have here. So um, it's uh, another tool that we built. It's also open source and freely available. How many of you heard about Insomnia? Okay, two people. So 
go try Insomnia afterwards. Uh, Insomnia, it's awesome. Uh, Insomnia.rest. This is uh, this is URL where you need to. Uh, this is where you need to go and uh, get your uh, next favorite tool. So uh, with this, I do have already predefined a. Um, uh, URL. So, like every time when I will be hitting this, I will be hitting this Kong proxy dot me, um, and uh, this is a live server. If I'll just do, hopefully DNS is works. Yep, it's live service. So if I'll do some something like, um, let's just do disable this header for a second. If I'll hit this, I will get the 404, which is uh, which is great. This is exactly what I want to see. So when when uh, first time I hit the service, I am hitting this load balancer. And uh, if I go to my Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes get services for namespace Kong. And uh, my Kong proxy, this is uh, the process that runs inside my Kubernetes cluster, uh, has a type of load balancer. And uh, this is the external IP address assigned to this one. And I just happen to own this uh, Kong proxy me uh, um, uh, domain. So I assign this to this, uh, pro to this, to this service. Um, we're exposing two ports, ports 80 and port uh, uh, um, HTTPS. So, and this is what we're going to be doing with this one. So when the first time I hit this, it gets me 404, but uh, at least I'm getting the response from the right place. I'm getting a response from the Kong servers and uh, the response uh, latency was super fast because there's nothing here. I just like hit the service, there's nothing here. Now I need to um, uh, provide some of the routing logic. In my ingress here, uh, the way how I configured here my ingress, um, a couple things that I specify here. I, first of all, this ingress I specified that will be served by Kong ingress controller. And uh, with the host, if I will go and assign uh, to, to this you know host, um, it should route me to back uh, uh, to future um, quote service. So let's take a look how we can do this. The first thing that the first thing that I can do here is I just put the um, host header. So I'm hitting this base URL, uh, the conproxy.me, and I'm just uh, providing the header. So based on this header, my ingress will route me to a particular service. So I click here. Sounds like uh, the code from Back to Future because we have a beef here. Um, Back to Future fans? Great, Scott. All right, uh, tough crowd, tough crowd. OK, so this is. Um, how I can tell that this actually comes from uh, from my uh, from my service. So it goes via my Kong, and now I have some extra um, extra headers here. So I know how long it takes to um, for uh, for Kong to retrieve this. So the, the latency is just seven milliseconds between uh, my Kong proxy and my service. Um, and uh, this is where my response coming from. If I go to my uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, let's go to uh, default namespace, and uh, that's my uh, back to future pod name. As you can see, this uh, exactly as it is. So, request came into the Kong, and Kong routed to this back to future. So, let's see how we can do for uh, for another one. Wait a second. Um, and uh, so, I deployed my Chuck Norris service, and yeah. So and now my response goes to Chuck Norris service. Again, I specified here a header for host. So the routing happened based on the header. Uh, yes. OK. <laughs> So uh, that's a good point. Let's, let's try it out. So we're going to do deployment uh, where we do. So where's our replication spec deployment spec? Oops. Yep. It's, it's, it's on top of replicas too. And if I will just go ahead and do apply. So we have another another one, right? So uh, if I will keep, so right now it's not it's not healthy yet. Let's see if it's uh, if it's up and running. Yep. Look at this. Oh yeah, uh, it's up and running. So um, right now, so and now it would be round robin, as you can see. 
uh, yeah, so as you can see here, it's just hitting different uh, different pod here. Uh, the look on this like a header pod name. Um, so the logic between load balancing can be also be you know changed uh, based on the um, health checks. I don't have it like on hand, but like the that's kind of how it works. We, you need to define a kind of like health check, and uh, it will be you know balancing off between like healthy or not healthy. But right now, by default, it's round robin basically. And the way how it works is just simply simply because um, we have a service. Service. This is how. So I'm not hitting this pod directly from my ingress. I'm exposing this uh, thing through um, um, exposing this thing through this uh, through the service, and this is how it works. Okay, so um, up and running. We see this. It's it's it's, it's good stuff. All working. Okay, so let's um, let's do something interesting. Let's do something interesting. I knew you will come. Okay, so. Um, Let's uh, let's start with something like very simple. So uh, let's assume uh, I will be under. Where's my? Oh yeah, I didn't show you that. So since I already have um, uh, like header based, but I also can just directly hit this URL. So if I go here and I start hitting this URL directly, so instead of um, using the header, it also supports like uh, um, the. The, the this this uh, the host based thing and the way how it works like this is kind of like nothing to do with Kong this is something that I like to do for my demos I use thing called external DNS and external DNS essentially based on my host I will be just um, go in and talk to my uh, DNS provider and will register this so essentially the way how it looks like if I'll just do dig plus short uh, back to future it's going to be the same IP address. So when it hits Kong, Kong can figure out how to extract this, like uh, the, the subdomain and the hit to uh, this particular thing. So uh, that's another beauty of using the, the like, API gateway here. So you will get all this type of jazz for, for free. Um, and um, the way how it looks like with the uh, external DNS, so let me show you. Um, the have an external DNS. Um, and so for example, here, like every time when I create, it, it's um, external DNS, it listens for ingresses and uh, uh, reads this annotation from ingress. And after that, it talks to my, um, to my provider. Uh, it's, uh, um, it creates this record back to future and chuck. So like every time I'm creating this ingress, it will provision for me automatically. So the for it looks cool for the demos because I don't need to like mess around with IP addresses and all these things. Um, so uh, next thing, uh, let's do let's let's mess around with some plugins. So with the, um, uh, the one of the like a simple thing that I can show you and the simple and useful thing is just enable rate limiting. So um, we will limit how many requests from this particular IP address we can get. So this is uh, called uh, the Kong plugin. So I'm going ahead and apply this in Kubernetes cluster. Um, and um, now I will be able to use this in my in my ingress. So. Only, only thing that I need to do here is just enable this annotation and uh, assign this plugin, a rate free tier, into the same name as I have in my, um, yep, this name. So this is how they connect it. And now let me show you in, um, in Insomnia. So if I will go ahead and say, uh, repeat on interval, let's see, uh, every half a second. So right now I'm getting two requests per second. Response is getting fine. We're getting stuff. We feel like we're getting hammered. So we should go ahead, enable this uh, rate limiting plugin. And all of a sudden, uh, the, the <laughs> denial of service attack prevented. So essentially we start uh, like a pushing back. We have only five uh, requests, uh, only kind of like a five, um, uh, requests that were allowed, so that's why this stuff start getting errors. And one of the things that also Kong adds here as an extra headers is about uh, this rate limiting. Uh, so the the consumer can back off based on this knowledge. We can say, okay, so rate limiting. Um, 
per minute and uh, how, much, how much time uh, remains. Now uh, time has passed and uh, now we can continue to, to hammer the service. Um, there are uh, plugins that are available as uh, on the ingress, but there are also global plugins that are available for everything. So for this example, for this particular demo, I have two plugins that enable globally. So this is one that's uh, this is a pretty cool one. It's called a bot detector. So essentially it reads the headers of particular or user agent header from a particular client and can prevent accessing the service. So this plugin is enabled already. So if I go to my uh, Kubernetes cluster and I say, Go to all namespaces. I just do uh, Kong uh, cluster plugin, and I have a like one that uh, prevents me for bots to access, and one uh, will collect the Prometheus uh, metrics. I will show you um, in a in a second. So essentially, every client that will have user agent. In this particular case, I do have some custom uh, deny user agent apart from the things that were already pre-configured here. Um, like, if I go here, where's my if the user agent, uh, user agent, and if I say in DC and I hit this, um, it gives me forbidden. Or if I will just do something like. Uh, uh, where's the crawler? Uh, I, I remember there was something like a, a MOS E. Yeah, like for example, this some sort of like if the some of the crawler that has user agent is a Microsoft Internet Explorer crawler, crawler that will not be able to hit my API. So that's uh, that's a globally it's available for all endpoints. So I can I can enable this into in the Chuck Norris. Um, and uh, we'll enable this in uh, other things. So now, so there's a use case where my uh, customers came in and to me and said, okay, so that's nice that you have a, like a rate limiting stuff, but what about um, if we want to have a like, different level, level of, uh, of servicing? So for example, based on our key, that's like the more advanced use case that I want to show you right now, um, you can do some, some of the stuff. So uh, for here, I do have a so-called uh, kind of like a pay tier example. And uh, with this, I'm combining two plugins, rate limiting plugin and the key off uh, plugin. So based on the key, uh, Kong uh, will recognize that I'm trying to access my service differently. So I need to serve this request differently. So for, uh, for requests that will go into my uh, Chuck Norris service, uh, if key will be presenting, the during the during this uh, conversation, I will allow ten requests per per uh, per minute. So that's kind of like a already generous, twice more as the previous one. And the way how it works with this, I need to have a couple things in. Um, so I will create two secrets. One will store the API key inside my Kubernetes. Another one will have a, another API key for. Um, um, for another use case. So I'll just let me run this. We'll just generate something and store it in uh, as a secret. And if I go ahead here and apply this to my Kubernetes cluster, and again, I just created those plugins. I didn't apply those to, to Ingress yet. And if I will go to my Chuck Norris, uh, let's do this one. We would need to here. So we're combining to this uh, two plugins. One plugin will uh, serve key off and another plugin will uh, provide me with different uh, layer of um, uh, of servicing this this uh, use case. Now if I go to my Chuck Norris and I'll try to provide this API key as my header. Now as a response, now I already have a rate limiting, different rate limiting. So if I will disable this header, I'm hitting this uh, normally, so that's why I'm getting uh, unauthorized because I have uh, two plugins configured here. If I will just want to do something like this and um, just only one plugin that will be provide different layer of the rate limiting, uh, it still will be, come on, Ip. okay. Um, it, it's, it's applied and I can use this without, uh, without header. Uh, but it would be nice if we were going to be using this with um, uh, with custom key. Now, uh, if we want to provide different logic 
for the same endpoint, but uh, based on a different key, we also can do that. That's why I do have um, different uh, configuration that says platinum tier. So the, for the platinum tier, I created another consumer. So consumer will be representing kind of like the way how um, Quonk will be dealing with upstream service. Essentially, it will be representing how the, your, your client uh, to, to the Quonk. Um, and uh, in uh, comparison to free tier, we limit by IP address. But with the uh, paid tier and platinum tier, we are limit by consumer. So it will be using this uh, consumer and we will specify which service and uh, we will be uh, binding this to. So I'm go ahead and applying this one to my, to my cluster and my ingress also need to be updated. Now for the next time, like I have a platinum support and I also provide the different API key. So for the same endpoint for the different API key, I have a platinum service. And for the platinum service, I have a 100 requests per, uh, per minute as my limit, which is, which is nice. So that's how we can do like a basic stuff with uh, basic ingress and basic HTTP, HTTP things. Um, um, any, any questions so far? Yes, but not in this presentation. So this presentation doesn't include, doesn't have a circuit breaking thing. So, um, but uh, if you go to docs.com, if you do uh, find this reference, and you can uh, you can read the how the internal logic how Kong handles um, the circuit breakers. Uh, there's a kind of like a passive health checks and active health checks. And specifically here, it's it's about Quonk, but for Quonk Ingress, if you go to this documentation, there's a reference explains how we can enable, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is it? Let's see, broke documentation on me. Uh, let's do this one. So we are going to this one, Kong Ingress Controller, and uh, this is like specific uh, explanation how this works in, uh, in, in Ingress. So in this case, uh, we have um, extension for uh, Ingress, it's called Kong Ingress, where we can specify a health checks for a particular service. Uh, my, uh, my demo already includes health checks. If I will hit something like, um, so if I will, Actuator um, health. So it's uh, the application has uh, endpoints that you can hit, and it will provides you um, different uh, liveliness and uh, readiness probes. Uh, also, it has uh, info endpoint that. Uh, will provide like all information about what kind of services available and like what which version it's built on. So the basically what you need to do is um, is to point this health check to uh, to this configuration, and you will be able to do this with the um, with this type of jobs. Any questions about HTTP? HTTP, HTTPS, um, uh, this thing also integrates with the uh, cert manager. If you're using like cert manager and um, uh, let's encrypt, I use let's encrypt personally uh, for like, if I need to provide like HTTPS certificates and uh, it's it's just works just quite nicely. Quonk also can um, uh, provide the ingress. So the way how it works with the cert manager, we need to provide a, uh, endpoint where let's encrypt will call in order to solve the uh, the challenge to, in order to issue your a certificate um, and the con integrates with this and provides the temporal endpoint where uh, let's encrypt can call back and change yeah okay so it looks like the server exists so I can issue the certificate so um, this this thing also works now let's switch gears and go in into in, in, interesting, uh, interesting route. So some of my customers came into me to say, "Hey, uh, we love your uh, the Back to Future Chuck Norris, but we want to have something like uh, uh, some some other some other services. But uh, we do have a mobile clients, and uh, on the mobile they like to use gRPC. 
uh, can uh, can you do this uh, like some of the service can will be exposed through gRPC so and this is where we're going into the world of dune and uh, my code service uh, are right now for dune let me deploy this while I will be talking it will be Uh, let me generate certificates for gRPC uh, so Dune. Um, my uh, Dune service also exposed um, through uh, gRPCS, secure gRPC, because I will be exposing this to outside world. Uh, generating uh, new certificates it already exist. Okay, good stuff. So I already um, did this before. Uh, and we'll just do Dune. Going back to this one, and we'll just do the apply uh, and do creating service now. So let's take a look how we can do the stuff with uh, with with this uh, differently. So uh, deployment, uh, traditional deployment. There is nothing special here. Um, uh, I just need to replace to the last, uh, the latest, but uh, doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, so um, this uh, already server has uh, gRPC secured enabled. Uh, this is location of my certificates. Now let's take a look on ingress, how ingress looks like. So it also looks the same uh, because it's a still all same uh, uh, ingress, but now we, we start getting more and more, um, more and more uh, annotations. So we need to specify the annotation. So this particular ingress will be served not through HTTP, but HTTP2, which gRPC works on top of. And um, here I also like, since I'm using this, um, uh, I want to use like secure gRPC, this is where I'm integrating with the cert manager. So cert manager will talk to Let's Encrypt and provide a, um, a certificate for, for, my, uh, for my server. And uh, that's where uh, the the Acme and Cert Manager comes into play. Plus, uh, same thing for my Dune. I have this integrated with um, um, uh, with uh, with my external DNS. Now, um, here I'm specifying the service that I need to hit, and my service now needs to have also special type of annotation here. So now it also needs to say that I'm talking to gRPC so that we can connect two dots here. So my clients came into Kong in gRPC and Kong will be able to talk to the service in gRPC, uh, in gRPC style. So uh, luckily my, uh, my uh, Insomnia also supports uh, gRPC so I can test this one. Um, I'm going to this URL, uh, Dune Kong the oh, looks like a bug. Yeah, so kongproxy.me, and we're going to a uh, secure connection. And uh, if I will hit this, kongproxy.me is not getting me anything, maybe because uh, DNS resolution is not working. Let's see. Uh, because always uh, blame a DNS if something doesn't work. Okay, so it uh, looks like DNS is not provided yet. Let's see if uh, our um, uh, my external DNS actually created everything what I need to have. So uh, here, what I can see, external DNS successfully created. So it will some, take some time to uh, refresh DNS. Uh, uh, sometimes also helps to have a um, uh, good DNS server, for example, 1111. Usually this is, works fine. It's Cloudflare. Uh, should be... Here we go. So now we have this. Uh, again, uh, if you do live demos and something does work, blame DNS. It's always kind of like it works. So uh, what just happened here, um, now I was able to connect and we start getting some of the uh, responses uh, from the um, from uh, from this like a gRPC uh, gRPC service, um, and it looks like um, this looks like it's a quote from Dune. 
So um, my uh, gRPC service includes two things, so I can continue to kind of hammer to get new things, but gRPC also supports streaming, so I can submit multiple responses back, and my uh, gRPC service uh, also include, let me show you my uh, gRPC definition. Yeah, so it includes two services. One is get quote, another one get quote stream. And uh, I will go and submit the stream. And my response includes a stream response from gRPC. And the response also getting through uh, through Kong. And fortunately, for some reasons, uh, Insomnia doesn't show me uh, these headers. Let me show a gRPC, uh, gRPC, gRPC, gRPC. Where is my gRPC? curl um, and uh, heating uh, dune gRPC URL and we're going for dune yeah so for example this one we don't need to do this and uh, we also uh, minus v should show us headers so um, also we have a header saying that uh, response comes from Kong, uh, even if it's uh, gRPC stuff. So that uh, looks, looks cool. Um, now, same ingress, um, again, everything goes through one, uh, one server. So still uh, one uh, process that handles all these type of things. Um, next thing that some of my customers just decide, okay, uh, we really want to have this quote service somewhere where we don't have, uh, we have a, like a very um, uh, requirements on like a dealing with the payload. Uh, we don't want to deal with the HTTP. We don't want to deal with HTTPS. Uh, we want to do some stuff around um, MQTP or some of the use cases that not like super convoluted like mine, but like you want to deploy, I don't know, DNS server in your Kubernetes cluster and DNS also talks through UDP uh, or you want to deploy your um, VPN server in your Kubernetes cluster and you need to expose it. So this is where we're going into the uh, interesting route now. Um, for that, I need to um, enable another listener. So with this, um, if I will just go, okay, get uh, services Kong. Right now, it just everything goes through one listener um, because it was uh, L7 protocols, and we can do this through the one thing, and uh, even uh, we do HTTP and HTTP2 multiplexing here. Um, we need to have a um, little bit more. We need to enable another um, another listener here. So, uh, oh, I didn't show you uh, this. So all this time, all this time, I was um, uh, there was a plugin uh, that was enabled on the cluster um, that I showed uh, earlier. Uh, cluster plugin, uh, Prometheus, that was collecting all the metrics, uh, all these requests that I was hitting and collected this and displayed this in the Grafana. Um, so let me refresh this one. Um, so all this is my services that we already have right now in um, in this uh, in this particular case. Uh, so we have a Back to Future, we have a Chuck Norris, and we should have uh, we should have uh, June here. So let's see. It's uh, two check check notice because we're running uh, two instances, so those two services. Uh, I, I'm, it's strange that I don't see um, I don't see any uh, Dune service. Maybe it's uh, it's not there yet for some reasons. Uh, but yeah, so all this like metrics was collecting that that's like some ridiculous number because I was running this like for a couple of days. So <laughs> it's not uh, what we did right now. It's uh, for for quite some time. Um, and uh, all these metrics will be collected automatically, and, but just by enabling this plugin. So that's something that also you will getting for free uh, when when you enable like this like API gateway for the services monitoring of the services and uh, um, where you know we're hitting those and, and so far so on. Chuck Dune, yeah. So we we do have all these um, uh, routes here. So, but because I'm just doing like one request, so that's why it shows um, not much. Okay, now I need to um, I need to enable this. Uh, this is a uh, this is the part of um, this is the part of uh, the Helm chart that will tell 
um, uh, the Kong to deploy another service with type load balancer, but in this case, we're going to be using the service only for, um, uh, for UDP. And here, I also will enable my, uh, my TCP because I don't want to go this twice, and I will show you TCP uh, afterwards. Um, with this, I just need to go ahead and, um, uh, and uh, install this just to do Helm upgrade. And uh, so what it will do, um, it will uh, generate new Helm release. Anyone using Helm to deploy stuff? So Helm essentially it is a uh, tool um, where you can package your software, provide all possible configurations. Um, and uh, the, uh, we do have some like a quick start URLs that you can just like uh, import and start using Kong. But I consider um, Helm is the only one production supported uh, uh, way how you can deploy and uh, configure Kong here. So now if I will run the services, I will have uh, two more as you can see here. Uh, one more, not two more, sorry. But since I enabled, um, since I enabled uh, TCP listener as well, now uh, the um, when I go to this IP address, port 80 will serve HTTP, port 443 serve HTTPS, and port 9000 will serve all uh, possible TCP uh, TCP stuff. So. So now, now we have this um, uh, available. So this is the your, this is the IP address that we're going to be using to talk uh, to UDP uh, UDP uh, payload. So uh, I'll just go to UDP. Yep, UDP service. Um, and I'll just do Kubernetes. So while it's doing this, let me show you what it actually does. So we go into here. With this uh, UDP ingress, it's the custom resource that uh, nothing to do with Kubernetes because Kubernetes doesn't know anything about UDP. So that's why we need to come up with something how we can con configure this. And uh, this pretty much looks like uh, your traditional ingress, except it's a custom resource from the Kong namespace, uh, from the uh, configuration Kong bet one UDP ingress. And we, I need to specify what kind of service I need to be exposing. So um, if I will hit this URL or this IP address, to port 9999, I should get access to my UDP server. The easiest way to connect this, we're going to be using netcat uh, and see. And uh, when I hit this, uh, this is where we're going to be starting interacting with uh, my API server through uh, UDP. And uh, who can pick up uh, which quotes uh, are here? Louder, Rick and Morty. So my Rick and Morty uh, quote service available through UDP. Um, you know, if you have uh, your, I don't know, Netcat on your phone, you can actually hit this, and you will get um, UDP stuff in uh, in your uh, in your in your browser uh, or, or 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 on your phone. So let's see if we have. Let me refresh this dashboard. Uh, and if I will see um, some UDP service appeared here. So all my services, my two Chuck Norris services, uh, let's do this bigger. Um, my, and not the 24 hours, let's do last, last hour. Uh, we have five more minutes to, to show you something. Uh, Dune, Chuck Norris, um, UDP is not there yet for some reasons doesn't show me. Uh, let's see, last five minutes. Um, should be here. Um, maybe it will take some time. Now, and uh, before we um, before we part, uh, sometimes uh, people asking questions about how I can uh, how I can test the, the, the connectivity. It's, it's not people asking. It's a, the first question I'm asking people when the people saying something is slow and uh, define slow and how we can measure. And uh, that's kind of like idea behind this particular example. So I deploy uh, iperf server. How many of you heard about iperf? 
Um, that's something that you need to learn today if you don't use it today, because this is the, uh, the moment when your system administrator will tell you, oh, like your application is slow, our, our network is awesome. This is where you bring the iperf and say, no, your network suck, my application is great, this is the numbers that I have. And this is where uh, iperf will help you. So essentially it contains two parts. It contains, uh, it's one binary, but it can be client and can be server. So I'm deploying server in my Kubernetes cluster and start this with the server. My iperf, so let's see. Uh, so I can hit 95. So 95 is the my Kong proxy.me. So I can I can potentially hit this. Yeah. So if I will do something like uh, oops. Uh, Kong proxy.me. Um, I'm hitting port uh, 9000. That's what uh, TCP is listener for. And uh, let's see how uh, fast my connection between uh, the Wi-Fi, that's, that's my Wi-Fi uh, communication between my data, my, my Kubernetes cluster that in uh, East Coast in Google Cloud. Um, and it's, it's okay, right? So because it's going through ingress, it's also going through uh, like all this like uh, Kubernetes uh, hubs. Um, and this is how we can measure, measure like your, your performance or like your throughput of your like gateway, because everything right now goes through the TCP socket on my Kong side of things. Um, that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you. If you want to learn more uh, about this type of jazz, I have a tons of videos. I do bi-weekly streams on the Kong YouTube channel where I'm kind of like sitting here and just okay, let's um, let's like hack around with something. Let's break things and. Um, it's usually not um, not scripted, so things usually break. Uh, but it's fun where I can talk to people and uh, they can suggest some of the things how we can fix that. Um, and I also have a tons of the videos about uh, how to configure Kong and Kubernetes, and not only in Kubernetes. With um, uh, we are uh, going to be doing a Kong Summit, which is uh, our gathering that we have uh, almost every every fall in San Francisco, where we're talking about the old uh, technologies around the cloud connectivity, service meshes, uh, Kong, and some, some other things. Um, if you're interested, uh, check this out. Um, YouTube channel, join Kong community. Um, and uh, with this, my name is Viktor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day.